Good morning. My name is Alicia Lee, and I'm one of the lay pastors here at Lower Manhattan Community Church. On behalf of all the leaders here at the church, I'd like to wish you and your families a very happy new year. Thank you for joining us today for this special virtual new year service. I'll be sharing a brief message today where I'll spend just a few minutes sharing something that's on my heart for the church for the new year. By the way, next week, we'll be here in person as usual. Same time, same place on Sunday, January 8th. It'll be a special worship service where we spend the entire service singing and praising the Lord. All right, let's dive into today's message. I'm in Isaiah 43, verse 19. If you have your Bible handy, go ahead and grab it. I'm in the ESV translation, which says, Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Let me read it one more time. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Now, Isaiah is the first of the major prophets in the Old Testament. He gives us the clearest picture of Christ in the Old Testament, and his prophecies about Christ are so clear and so important that he's quoted in the New Testament more than any other prophet. He's quoted by Jesus himself. But to the people of his time, in 8th century BC, he was mainly a prophet to the nation of Judah. Now remember, at that time, Israel was a divided kingdom. It was divided into north and south, and the south was the nation of Judah. Isaiah foretells that they, the nation of Judah, will be exiled to Babylon. And so that's where we are in Isaiah 43. Um, In that time, the nation of Judah is in exile, and God speaks to them. He reminds them that he created them, he loves them, and that he will deliver them. That's the context for verse 19. He's telling the Jews in exile, behold, I am doing a new thing, just like I did at the Red Sea, a new thing to deliver my people. I've come to this verse many times in the past couple of years. I've heard others speak this verse many times over the past couple of years, and it's felt close and personal to me. Because God has done many new things in my life. If you know me, then you know that that includes a career change. It includes a new baby. And that's just for starters. And I know that God's been doing new things in your lives. He's been doing a new thing at this church. And so this verse feels close and personal to many of us. So as I prayed for this New Year's message, it's no surprise, really, that I felt drawn once again to this verse. And this time, I felt the Lord leading me in a different direction. I felt him leading me to slow down, to dwell in this verse in a way that I haven't before, to dwell really on three words, the first three words of verse 19, behold, I am. Now, normally I have three points in my messages, but today I have just one. That point, that message is really a call for us to behold I am. So let's talk about what that means. The first word is behold. With this word, God is telling us right off the bat to do something that is not the usual something that we're used to doing. He's not telling us to go and make a to-do list or to make something or to change something or to go somewhere. He's telling us to behold. Now, that's kind of an old-fashioned word, behold. What does it mean? It means to see and to observe. And to emphasize this point, later on in the same verse, God asks us, do you perceive it? Right? He's telling us to see to observe, and to perceive. So now the question is, what are we to behold and see and observe and perceive? Well, when I've read this verse in the past, my reflex has been to behold the new thing, to focus on the new thing. I ask all sorts of questions about what that thing is. Has it happened yet? Have I seen it? Am I a part of it? What am I supposed to do? Where am I supposed to go? 
I'm not saying that's a bad thing. In fact, I think it's a good thing. I think often there is something we're called to do, something we're called to discern and to obey. But what if, for once, we fight that reflex, at least to start? What if, after behold, we slow down at the next two words, I am, and then we just stop there? In Exodus, God calls himself, I am. Moses, at the burning bush, asks God what he's to call him, how he's supposed to make the, real, the Israelites realize who God is. And God tells Moses to say, tell them I'm called, I am. I am. Two words that tell us with both majesty and with precision that God transcends everything. Who are you, God? I am. Nothing existed before God. God wasn't created. God creates. There's no beginning to God. There's no end. He is the beginning, and he is the end. He's the alpha and the omega. Who are you, God? I am. When we meditate on these words, on behold, I am, we're meditating on the great I am. We're meditating on God himself. And when I did this, even through the haze of caring for a newborn, God very deliberately led me to ask a question that I had never asked before. Not what is the new thing, not what's my part in it, what am I supposed to do? He led me to ask why. Why, God, do you do the new thing? As I kept praying, as I kept praying through this question, this is what I heard. Those same three words that led me to ask this question I had never asked before, that led me to ask this important question, those same three words offer the answer. God does the new thing so that we will behold him, so that we will behold God himself. That's why he's always done a new thing. That's why he did a new thing when Noah built the ark. When he led the Israelites out of Egypt. When he brought the, the Judeans out of exile. When Jesus came. That's why he does a new thing in my life. In your life. That's why he's doing a new thing at this church. That's why he's promised us that he will do a new thing. When Jesus comes again, it's also that we will behold him. There's going to be plenty of time this year to ask all of the usual questions. We should ask them. God wants us to ask those questions. I know many of us are waiting to be delivered, waiting to be healed, waiting for the new thing. But today, as we begin the new year, I invite you to join me in slowing down and dwelling on the first three words of Isaiah 43:19. Three words that hold as much importance, as much beauty, and as much truth as in the beginning, or it is finished. Behold, I am. Join me in prayer. Lord, thank you for loving us. Thank you for patiently teaching us and leading us. I pray that now and throughout this new year, you would help us to behold you, that you would help us to look to you above all else. We pray in Jesus' name, the one who was, the one who is, and the one who is to come. Amen. Thank you again for joining us for this special New Year service. And I really hope I'll see you next week as we come together for our first in-person worship service of the year. On behalf of the leadership of the church, I'd like to wish you a very happy New Year. Peace and love to you and your families.